Welcome to Audit Archive, where we run you through some of the most questionable and rather atrocious police encounters. Today, we're looking at a case where a cop unlawfully put his firearm to an innocent man's head for no reason. Sometime in November 2018, Rudy Ornelas, a barbershop owner, was driving to work when he was pulled over by several officers from the Sacramento Police Department. The officers informed Mr. Ornelas that the reason for the traffic stop was because of his window tints being too dark and the front number plate being missing. I'm stopping you because you got no front plate and your window tints too dark. This entire ordeal was captured on Mr. Ornella's mobile phone. The female respondent here on the scene is Officer Sarah Stambaugh, and she appeared to be rather distressed after Mr. Ornella's refused to roll his window down any further after being asked to do so. Do I got to? No, I'm saying I got it right. I count that up. For my safety. And for my safety also. Even though there is no clear cut law on this matter, it is often presumed that a citizen must roll their windows down just enough so that a two-way conversation can take place and any documents can be exchanged. Therefore, in this scenario, it can be said that Mr. Ornelas was well within his rights to refuse Officer Stombaugh's request. Regardless, Mr. Ornelas informed the officers that he had already been cited for the violations he was stopped for and was issued a fix-it ticket. I got a uh, fix ticket for that too, also. Hey, which is not due into uh... I don't know, I can see that. A fix-it ticket is issued when a driver is found to be in violation of a minor traffic law, such as having a broken taillight or expired registration. Rather than imposing a fine, the ticket requires the driver to fix the issue and provide proof of correction to the court or law enforcement agency within a certain time frame. It is also to be noted that within this time frame, the driver cannot be cited for the same violation again. Mr. Ornelas provided the officers with his information and was told to hang tight while they verified his details and ran any warrant checks as per usual protocol just to make sure he was all set to drive. While one of the officers went back to his patrol car to run Mr. Ornelas' details, Mr. Ornelas, who had already noticed Officer Stambaugh's irrational behavior, engaged in a conversation with her and implied that he was being mistreated. Is any safe here safety? To this, Officer Stambaugh informed Mr. Ornelas that someone had apparently gone out of their way to specifically point out his car for reckless driving and report it to them. Mr. Ornelas denied any wrongdoing and told Officer Stambaugh that all accusations were false. Regarding me? No, that's, that's false. Amidst their conversation, Officer Stambaugh asked Mr. Ornelas if there were any weapons in his car, and Mr. Ornelas promptly informed Officer Stambaugh that there was indeed a Smith & Wesson firearm registered to his name stored in the trunk of his car. Any weapons in the Uh, yeah. Is, is this a registered firearm in my name? Upon hearing this, Officer Stambaugh reminded Mr. Ornelas to keep his hands on the steering wheel and signaled for the other officer to come back. When the other officer approached, Officer Stambaugh told him that she felt unsafe standing alone next to Ms. Ornella's car because of the presence of a firearm in there. She also added that Ms. Ornella's alleged nervous behavior was suspicious. First of all, it goes without saying that Mr. Ornelas displayed no signs of danger throughout the encounter. He calmly complied when he was asked for his details and remained put together, all while answering any other questions. And secondly, countless courts in the United States have ruled that nervous behavior or anxiety during a traffic stop does not justify any further investigation. Therefore, Mr. Ornelas' alleged nervousness cannot be used as a reason for escalating the traffic stop. Despite this, Mr. Ornelas was ordered to undo his seatbelt and step out of his car. What, I need you to, can you undo your seatbelt for me? 
However, Mr. Ornelas immediately requested a supervisor, but was told that the supervisor would be called only after he stepped out of his car. Uh, can I call the supervisor? What? I would like to well, see you can talk to him afterwards. As this went on, Officer Stambaugh, without warning, unholstered her service pistol and aimed it directly at Mr. Ornella's head. She gave Ms. Ornella zero orders while aiming directly at him, and this appeared to surprise the other officer on the scene too. According to 835A of the California Penal Code, officers should only use deadly force when necessary in defense of human life. Officers shall evaluate the particular circumstances of each case and shall use other available resources and techniques if reasonably safe and feasible. Also, the penal code states two situations where deadly force may be used, defending against an imminent threat of death or serious injury, also known as self-defense or defense of others, or to apprehend a fleeing suspect or a felony that threatened or resulted in death or serious bodily injury. If the officer reasonably believes that the suspect will kill or seriously injure another person, less immediately apprehend it. Therefore, it comes as no surprise that Mr. Ornelas did not fall under any criteria that would subject him to deadly force. Following this, Mr. Ornelas was pulled out of his vehicle and placed in handcuffs without being told why he was being detained. Mr. Ornelas also questioned the officers himself but received no complete answer from either of them. He was then placed inside a patrol car and taken to the police station soon after. In a video later uploaded to his YouTube channel, Ms. Ornelas explained that while he was detained inside a patrol car, officers unlawfully searched his vehicle without his consent and eventually located his firearm. And they took me out of my vehicle, placed me in handcuffs, he also made it very clear in the original video that he said no to consenting to a search, but his refusal was ignored. And then they asked me, do they have consent to search my vehicle? I said no. Ultimately, Mr. Ornelas was charged with illegal transportation of a firearm. His vehicle was towed away and his charges were later dismissed after he retained a lawyer. After Mr. Ornelas' videos went viral on the internet, the incident caught former Sacramento County Sheriff John McGinnis' attention, who looked at the video and thought everything was done legally and by the book. He also went on to state that the law requires them to actually book him for driving that car on a public highway without a driver's license or any identification in its place. What's surprising is that since the encounter, Officer Stambaugh was promoted to detective and continues to serve the Sacramento Police Department with no repercussions for her past actions. Ms. Ornelas decided not to sue the department after the incident despite the internet's outrage over the ordeal. In fact, in a very recently uploaded video on his YouTube channel, Ms. Ornelas stated that the reason why he didn't sue was that he was living in constant fear after the encounter and that he was constantly being harassed by the Sacramento Police Department, claiming that their officers unlawfully stopped him numerous times just to inquire about the encounter. In the video, he also stated that he has since forgiven Officer Stambaugh for the trauma she caused him and made it clear that he wishes not to sue the department. Be sure to check out our previous video where we cover another outrageous police encounter.